Chapter 21. Secret Keepers. What? Pearl said with a gasp. You want us to be your apprentices? Really? That's so cool. Ben stepped back into the room. Apprentices? That's right, Dr. Rue said. I'll do it, Pearl cried. When can I start? Can I start right now? Mr. Tabby, who remained on the other end of the intercom, cleared his throat. <clears> throat> dear me, dear me, are you certain you want the responsibility of two children? Human children require so much care. They do not respond well to commands. Their curiosity leads them astray time and time again. They won't be, respon they won't be my responsibility, Dr. Wu said. Since you are my assistant, they will be your responsibility. Oh, Mr. Tabby's voice turned cold. More work for me. How delightful. Then the intercom went silent. Pearl nudged Ben with her elbow. Can you believe this? Apprentices. <clears throat> Ben's legs wobbled with excitement. Apprentice to a veterinarian for imaginary creatures? He could hardly believe it. But then he remembered. I don't think I can do it, he said, disappointment settling over him like a rain cloud. I'm only here for the summer, then I go back to Los Angeles. I'm not going to Los Angeles, Pearl said. I live here. I never go anywhere. I can do it for sure. You can both do it, Dr. Wu said. We can make this a summer apprenticeship to begin with but you must get permission from your parents. What do we tell them? Ben asked. Tell them that you will be working at Dr. Wu's Worm Hospital. I will expect you to be here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will expect you to arrive each morning at 8 a.m. precisely, and you will leave at 3 p.m. precisely. She shuffled through a desk drawer, then slid a piece of paper to the edge of the desk along with a pen. But first, you must sign the contract of secrecy. Another thing to sign? Pearl didn't argue this time. She signed immediately. <clears throat> ben leaned over the paper, squinting. The print is really small. I can't read any of it. Dr. Wu pushed the pen toward Ben. It simply states that you will not tell anyone that this is actually a hospital for imaginary creatures and that anything you see, hear, feel, touch, smell, or taste while working as my apprentice will be kept a secret. Ben thought about it. As cool as the apprenticeship sounded, eight o'clock in the morning was really early. He'd never been a morning person. He had two alarms in his bedroom back home just so he wouldn't be late for school. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there were a lot of days, and then there was the whole crushing, shredding, vaporizing thing. What will we be doing? He asked, staring at Dr. Wu's missing finger. You'll be doing whatever needs to be done, Dr. Wu replied. A few stray pieces of yellow glitter fell from her hair. Come on, Pearl said. Sign it. <clears throat> what are you waiting for? What else are you going to do all summer? Hang out at the senior center? Ben picked up the pen. Had he already broken the contract of secrecy by telling Grandpa Abe he was searching for Sasquatches? But his grandfather hadn't believed him, so no harm had been done. He said, Ben, oh, he signed Ben Silverstein. Dr. Wu collected the contract and tucked it in <clears throat> the top desk drawer. Then her expression and voice turned serious again. There are consequences for breaking the contract, she told them, just so you know. Before Ben could ask what kind of consequences, a buzzer sounded and the same nasal voice shot out of the loudspeaker. Dr. Wu, the hatchling is scheduled for departure. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll be right there, Dr. Wu stood. She collected her lab coat from the rack and slid her arms through its white sleeves. Sunlight streamed in through the window, illuminating the scar on her face and casting a shadow that made it look twice as large. Are you sending the hatchling back to the imaginary world? Pearl asked. Can we see it before it leaves? Can we say goodbye? 
Ben asked. Dr. Wu gathered her long hair and tied it into a knot at the back of her neck. Then she slid her stethoscope over her head. Brandon hatchlings became easily attached to humans. It is best that it is it is best that it not see you. Too bad, Ben thought. He wished he'd taken a picture of the hatchling when he found it before he'd signed that contract of secrecy. Now he'd never see the little seahorse face again. Sometimes the hardest part of this job is saying goodbye, Dr. Wu said, as if reading Ben's mind. Then she ushered them to the elevator door. Mr. Tabby will see you to the gate. Good day. Mr. Tabby was waiting in the lobby, a pocket watch in his hand. So, you are going to be apprentices? Maybe, Ben said, if we can get permission. Mr. Tabby tucked the watch into his vest pocket. Today is Saturday. The apprenticeship begins on Monday. That gives you one day to get permission. We'll get it, Pearl said with a confident nod. Follow me. It's time for you to go home. The big ring of keys swung from Mr. Tabby's hand as he hurried down the driveway. The kids at his heels. It is beyond my comprehension how Dr. Wu expects me to do my job and babysit you two at the same time. We don't need a babysitter, Pearl said huffily. We're old enough to take care of ourselves. I hope you're old enough to take care of yourselves because being an apprentice for Dr. Wu will not be like working at an ice cream parlor or in a candy shop. It will be dangerous work, I tell you, and I do not have time to watch over you. The scars on Dr. Wu's face and neck and her missing fingers were like neon warning signs. Ben remembered how the hatchling's flame had nearly burned off his face. Maybe this isn't such a good idea, he said, common sense tugging at his thoughts. His parents wouldn't be pleased if he came home missing a foot or covered in claw marks. Too late for you to change your mind, Mr. Tabby told him as they reached the gate. You have agreed. You have signed the contract of secrecy. He raised his eyebrows and stared down at Ben. Are you a man who keeps his word, or are you a liar? I am not a liar, Ben said. Ben tells a lot of stories. Pearl said, but that's different from lying. Stories? Mr. Tabby frowned. Well, you are forbidden to tell any of Dr. Wu's stories. Do you understand? Ben nodded. Then, if you are able to obtain your parents' permission, I shall see you here Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Do not be late. Mr. Tabby opened the gate. Should we bring anything? Pearl asked. Like a backpack or a sack lunch? Mr. Tabby's nose twitched. It is always a good idea to bring bandages. Lots and lots of bandages. He reached into his vest and pulled out two rolled up pieces of paper, each tied neatly with a ribbon. I almost forgot. Each of you has earned a certificate in Sasquatch catching. Thanks, Ben and Pearl said as they took the certificates. Eight in the morning, Mr. Tabby repeated as he locked the gate behind him. Do not be late or I shall be most displeased. Then he turned on his heels and headed back to the old factory. Look, Pearl whispered, nudging Ben with her elbow. As Mr. Tabby walked away, a tail slid out from under his vest, a long red cat's tail, but it was there for only a moment, then disappeared as if, as if it had been imaginary.